So what is preparedness in San Francisco? Well, the snapshot that I've sort of taken in is that there's sort of a physical quality to it. So you have your kits. Like I've got my stuff in my, I have three garbage cans in my house, all with wheels ready to bivouac right by the garage door so I can kick it in and pull them out in case my building jumps off the foundation, right? So I've got that taken care of. I've got some preliminary skills. I've done the NERT training, so I've got some of those talents as well. Hopefully they'll be useful. Hopefully I won't need them. Um, but then there's also this next phase, which is the mental phase, which is like about confidence and empowerment. You know, I don't think anybody wants to walk out at the event and then see the person who's always been the leader on the block on the corner crying, screaming, we're all going to die. That's not really going to be the tone that you want to have in that experience, right? But if people haven't taken the time to really think through what that experience is going to be like and, and how they're going to manage through it and see the other side, that could be very likely be what happens. And then lastly, the social element of preparedness, right? You know, pre-event reciprocity, meaning that, you know, a neighbor of mine recently, um, it was really late at night, one in the morning, I looked out the window, flashing lights in front of our house. I could see across the street um, that his wife was on the couch and she was being treated by um, paramedics. And I knew right away what was going to happen was that she was probably going to go to the hospital. Now, this is my neighbor. You know, I come, I, every Saturday and Sunday, I walk across with my coffee cup. We chatted up. I know the kids. I play catch with the kids. So right away, I just got up, put my pants on, walked across the street, and walked in his living room and said, okay. And he, and he looked at me and said, thanks, brother. Didn't even have to say a word. It was like, I know exactly why you're here. You're here so I can go to the hospital with my wife, and if my kids walk out, there isn't some stranger in the living room that's going to freak him out. It's Uncle Dan. And Uncle Dan's going to be like, it's all good. Your parents had to go out and run an errand. They're going to be back, and then they can go back to sleep. Now, how powerful is that for my, my partner, Matt, who's got to deal with this crisis with his wife, where he doesn't have a compounding crisis of what's he going to do with his kids? And that reciprocity that we developed was leveraged at that point, very similar to maybe perhaps after an earthquake. But if that's the only time we need it, we know it's there, and we can leverage it. And this is not only on an individual basis, but it escalates all the way up to after the event when the church has to work with the neighborhood association and the local nonprofit to support the community through its recovery. If they've never even met each other or talked before, how effective are they going to be at working together? The reality is we've got to start working on those relationships today, and we actually have some really exciting strategies to make that happen. So let's take a closer look. Events, response, restoration, and recovery. Now, if we take the first piece, right, which is the response phase, right, this is what we call level one capacity, right? In level one, what you really need to focus on is your universe. And what's your universe during the first couple hours of a disaster? It's your self, right? Like, am I alive? Did something follow me? Do I need to save myself? Secondly, my family. What's up with my family? How can I uh, attain th their status and then address their conditions, if anything? And then thirdly, my immediate neighbors. You know, the people within a block of your house, like, oh, my neighbor's house is on fire. Wait a minute. His grandmother is in a wheelchair, and she's on the top floor. I better get over there because I know they're going to need help evacuating her. Right? So that's kind of like the universe you're going to be in. And what are the skill sets you really need at that point? Well, self-preservation, right? That's kind of easy. That's usually instinctual. And then a baseline capacity to cooperate and coordinate to achieve immediate health and safety goals. Skills that you acquire in SF Safe and skills you acquire at NERT. So this is a level one capacity. And the reality is most people will probably wing this who live in the city. But then the next phase in level two is at the neighborhood level. You know, six to 12 blocks in each direction. What's going on in those areas? Because those are all impact, impacting your life at that point, right? And what you need to be able to do is uh, be able to participate in dialogue and deliberation regarding short-term solutions, meaning that how do we get our lifelines back? How do we ensure the public safety for our community? How do we get our baseline economic needs, right? How do we address these things? And the essential thing is being able to sit in a room with a bunch of people that you sort of know and be able to feel comfortable in identifying what your goals are but then be able to collectively prioritize them and then work against those goals and everyone be supportive of that process because they know eventually the things they are care about will be addressed as well. Now this is the one that's the big kahuna and this is the one which frankly New Orleans fell down over which was recovery. Um, when you go into the recovery phase it's a very different narrative, right? In recovery it's not only the level one, level two relationships that we talked about but now you're talking about regional and citywide issues. A community needs to be able to not only deal with the, the local issues, but actually be able to participate at the, the city level to talk about how their goals and priorities are going to be met as well. This is very complicated work. This has to do with land use, this has to do with transportation, and this has to do with economic development. So what do we need to do? 
We need to identify and leverage existing challenges and opportunities that are organically occurring, but using, in a community-supported organizations, the capabilities needed to participate in all three phases of an event. This is a very lofty goal. This is a very ambitious goal, but I don't think we have a choice if we're going to meet the original goal stated on this initiative, which is that everybody who was here before is going to be welcome to stay after, then this is essential that we strive for this level um, of, a, of achievement. 